really doing well. Um, th this is a little bit of an aside. I think it's, it's just important. When you, in general, when you're playing for an audience, which is what we're doing right now, and you get applause, we always have to acknowledge the applause. Um, and so that includes like a bow, well, you know, or at least a little acknowledgement. So I'm going to practice that real quick. Can we, can we applaud for them? We get a great job. So you're sitting when you when you, you play, and, and one I have to say that um, I mentioned before, you got to make yourself as comfortable as possible. I used to have a teacher that would say, "Hey, take your shoes off if you want," and I used to do that. And I'm not telling you to do that because I think I think it would maybe not a good idea, but but I would do that. The point is, is like you just want to be as comfortable as possible to make your be have your best performance because they're not looking at you anyway. It's a blind audition. Um, but I will say that um, in general, if it, I think this the Standing is the optimal way to play this action. I think it facilitates breathing and it's, it's kind of a good way um, to have good body balance when you play. Why do you sit? I'm just out of curiosity. Are these good questions to practice when you're sitting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just um, for this class, could I have you stand up for it? Let's do this class, Dan. Now, if it becomes too big of a change, don't change. Um, you don't necessarily need to change for your audition. Um, do whatever is going to be more comfortable for you. But I would recommend that you consider um, consider standing, or at least do some time standing when you play. Um, so you make a beautiful sound, a beautiful vibrato. The thing that I actually liked the, the best in this whole etude was when you get to the sort of forte dynamics um, here um, in the fourth line, near the end of the fourth line. I mean, that, that was excellent. You really did that well. Your, your first note um, is something I want to talk to you about. And it, it wasn't the first note of the etude. It was your warm-up note. And that matters. You know, and it's are your judges assessing you at that time? Well, yes and no. Um, they are absolutely because they have an impression for what you play. And I'm telling you, like the way that you, you play that first note gives them an impression that they're going to evaluate you on for the rest of it. And um, the first note that we played, there's a lot of extraneous noise in the sound, um, which makes sense because it's a little bit cold in here, and so condensation sort of builds up. But you want to make sure that like um, everything is, is clear, that you've cleared the readout, and that first note is, is a beautiful sound. Can you try that? Give me your very first like warm up note. Yeah, I like that. And you might even think about playing a little bit more confidently, even though the first thing here is piano. Maybe think like a strong mezzo forte. Let us know that this is a confident note. It's not just for your judges; it's for you too. And the way that you approach it absolutely will change the way that that you play this. Could I hear it once more? I like the vibrato a little bit stronger. <laughs> to work on like long phrasing in this is to reduce the texture. And so could I hear you play your G, G flat, G, G, G flat. So if you go.
music is dictated by a primary line. And I bet you guys can figure it out. It's usually on strong beats. But um, can you play our sharp yacht? instruction guide that was published with these etudes that Dan Gielot did this morning, and he actually addressed the, the exact same issue there. Because I think that this is a more desirable sound than So I, I wonder, just should we try it? Could I hear a side B flat and lift your first index finger? Yeah. Now, you hear when you trill, the air is kind of, it's not moving, so I hear, I, I hear, make sure that I like this better. Can I hear? Yeah, yeah. Maybe just consider uh, the change there. There's not a right or wrong way to do any of this. And in this case, it's really a preferential thing. I mean, we're not going to deduct points off of it. But say in the future, it's something you might want to think about. You might work with your teacher on it to see if it's a good uh, solution for you. I'd like to play it from the beginning. I wonder if you can be just a little bit softer to see if we can get that terrapin phrase shape in that ear again. From the beginning of this. Sometimes, and, and this happens to me actually, I hear a little bit of a leaky palate when you play. And so really work to close this thing off here because I think it's, um, it's changing some of your attack. I hear like air sort of leaking here. A lot of times that can just be addressed by if you can find a way to plug your nose in when, when you do leak out of the nose. See, I, like even when I've been trying to do this, like I can't get it to respond. When you leak out of the nose and you have it plugged, you'll feel your ears pop. And a lot of it is if you're just aware of it, you'll make the correction if you need to. Think about keeping your airstream a little more focused. Right now, I think it's keep it skewed sometimes, and I think that's maybe why we're, we're leaking a little bit from the soft palate. <laughs> It's all right. You're, you're doing, you know, just starting a note softly on saxophone. It's one of the most challenging things. 
You're a great player. You need to get this. Can you play it again? So uh, avoid um, doing any sort of these ornaments that are that are too fast. Want to make sure that everything comes out clear. But this is what I'm hearing. This is what I want to hear. Just make sure there's clarity in the whole thing. Thanks for being a good sport. It's wonderful. Bravo. 